Welcome back, Algebra 2 people. Here we are, last section of, of this unit. We're doing systems of equations. The guys were so happy when I told them that I would do this unit. They just couldn't hold their joy. Look at them all, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Bruss, Mr. Bean, so excited. Here we go, let's get off to it. The first thing we're going to do is a little bit of Algebra 1 review, okay? You've done this before. We're going to solve systems of equations today. We're going to do some that we've done before. We're going to use elimination first. Now remember, elimination works this way. First of all, you need to make sure that your numbers with the correct variables are aligned. So I need all my x's. I need all my y's. I need the equal signs to be aligned. And then the numbers, the constants, those are just by themselves. And remember, when we eliminate, we are going to add down. Okay? We're going to add down. So we want to eliminate by having the positive of a number and the negative of a number because that is going to give us zero, all right? So make sure you understand that we're going to add down when we do this. All right, here we go. Let's try one. So the first thing I'm looking for is, are these numbers the same and opposite? I need the same number but opposite. They are not and Y is not either. So now I need to pick a number that I can multiply by everything. So I want to multiply everything here. By what? What do I need to multiply 9 by to get negative 18? Well, I need to multiply it by 2. Well, I remember, I, do, I want different signs. So I'm not going to multiply it by a negative 2. So let's see what we have now. I have my first equation, of which I did nothing to it. My second equation, I have to multiply every single thing here. Remember that? 2x times 2 gives me 4x. 9y times 2 gives me positive 18y. And uh, negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. Now you'll see right here in the middle, I have the same number but opposite. So when I add these two things up, I'm going to get those are will be eliminated. Negative 8, 4, that is a negative 4x. I just combine like terms. Negative 18y and positive 18y, that is eliminated. You shall be eliminated. 6 plus negative 30 is negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 4, and we get x is 6. Very nicely done, right? Very nicely done indeed. Now I have my x yet, so remember I need x and y. Does it matter which equation you plug it into? My suggestion is don't use one that you changed, like I changed this one by multiplying by 2. Use one of the originals, and it really doesn't matter. I'm going to pick the second one this time. So 2 times 6, because x is 6, plus 9y equals negative 15. So now we have 12 plus 9y equals negative 15. 9y subtract 12 equals negative 27. Divide by 9, and we get negative 3. Now, it's very important you understand the solution to this system of equations. A system, remember, when I have two or more equations in there, that's a system. The solution is an ordered pair, my x and my y value written like that. So please get in the habit of writing those. Mr. Kelly definitely approves. Let's see what he can do over here with his watchful eye. All right, so let's see. Mr. Kelly, um, let's bring you to the front here. Okay, so as he watches us, Ooh, very creepy. All right, so that was elimination. This time we're going to do substitution. I want you to see here the difference. 3x, the x's are aligned, the y's are in line, the numbers are in line, but the equal sign is not. This one's a good one to do substitution, and here's how you know when it's a good thing to do substitution. When you have one variable by itself equal to the rest of it, that's a great time to do substitution. So I'm going to rewrite this equation, but instead of x, I'm putting what x is equal to. So I'm going to do 3x plus 7y equals 10. But what is my x? My x is this whole thing, 2y plus 12. So now I'm going to solve that. So distribute here, that's 6y plus 36 plus 7y equals 10. I can combine like terms. I have 13y plus 36 equals 10. I need to subtract 36 from both sides. So that's negative 26, and I need to divide. So y equals negative 2. Now remember, 
I need to plug that in to find my x value. I have my y value, I need my x value. Now in this case, again, I can plug it into either one. It's gonna give me the same one. I'm gonna do it here because I already know it's solved for x. So x equals two times my y value of negative two plus 12. So x equals negative four plus 12. X equals positive eight. So again, I need to write that as my ordered pair of eight and negative two. Very good. Hopefully you remember substitution and elimination a little bit from algebra one. So right now I want you to try this one on your own. You decide what method you want to do best. You can do every single one of them with elimination or substitution, it doesn't matter. Some lend themselves better to elimination. This one lined up nice and neat, it's probably better to eliminate. I'll give you a hint, you may have to multiply both equations by a number. So you try that one, pause the video, good luck. All right, as you can see right here, I decided I want to do these numbers. They're a little bit smaller than here. So I, I knew that I could multiply this by the opposite. So I took two, I multiplied it up here, but I made it a negative, because remember I want the signs different. So I multiplied the first equation by negative two. The second equation then I multiplied by that number. It's an easy way to guarantee it, right? So this I multiplied by three. So my two equations here, negative 24x minus six y equals 12. 24x plus 6y equals negative 12, and you can see what happened was, boom, boom, everything canceled. So we need to talk about what does it mean when everything cancels? All right, so, excuse me, Mr. Bean. Let's see what you watch over here. All right, so here we go. There are three types of solutions that you can have when we graph these. One is a ordered pair. So maybe I graph this line and I graph this line and where they meet is my x and y. It's my ordered pair. That is my solution. So when I have one solution, I'm actually getting a number in here for my x and I'm getting a number, could be the same, probably a different number for my y. So whenever you get an x equals a number or a y equals number, you know you are on the right track to getting one solution and one solution looks like that where they cross. We could also have a situation where, let's see, let's me have me erase this real quick. We could have a situation where we have parallel lines. So maybe we have a line like this and we have a line like this. Now those lines are never going to intersect. And since they never intersect, there's gonna be no solution, all right? This happens when you get down to it and you get a false statement, maybe zero equals four. All right, that is false. And when you get something that is false when you're solving, that means there's gonna be no solution. And last, kind of tricky to see graphically, all right, is maybe you have a situation where you get a line and then you get the exact same line. That means every point on these lines are the same. And when we, we have that, we say that is infinitely many solutions. And when you'll know when you get that, because there will be no variables left, like no solution, but what will happen is you'll get a true statement. So four equals four, that's true, all right? Eight equals eight, zero equals zero. That's how you know when you have a infinitely many solutions. So over here, we now know that we have infinitely many solutions because zero does equal zero. That is a true statement, all right? So you need to keep an eye out on these. You could have one solution when you have two lines, all right? You could have infinitely many, or you could have no solutions. Okay, whoa, this one looks a little bit trickier now. We have, any, we have a system of equations, two equations. One is linear and one is quadratic. Let's see how we go about solving this. Well, I'm gonna use, honestly, I'm gonna use um, substitution because I have a variable by itself. So x plus y equals negative two. And that y is x squared minus four. So this is really now, I like to put them in the standard, right? x squared plus x, let's add two. All right, so the negative four plus two gives us negative two. Now we need to factor two numbers that multiply to negative two and add to one. 
So that's negative 1 and positive 2 because negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 and negative 1 plus 2 is that. Got to use the zero product property, set these equal to zero. So I know one x is 1 or x equals negative 2. So I have two answers. I need to check them both. I'm going to use this equation because it's solved for y. So let's plug in the first one. 1 squared minus 4 is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And then we have y equals negative 2 squared minus 4. Remember, negative 2 squared is a positive 4. So I have two answers. I have 1 comma negative 3 and negative 2 comma 0. Let's take a look and see what that actually means on the graph. So I'm going to try and do this graph as best I can. Uh, x squared minus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so here we have our graph of our quadratic. All right. Now let's just take, for example, let's just do something really quick and see what happens if I have a line. All right, before we plot our, our second line, let's just see what happens um, with the possibility of having a line. So I could have how many solutions now? I could have two solutions, as you can see here. I could also have how many solutions? I could have one solution, right? If it just meets right there at the, at the uh, tip, I could have one solution, okay? So there's a possibility of having two, one, we could even have zero solutions. Zero solutions is also a possibility on this. Let's see what ours is. So this is the same equation as y equals negative x minus 2. So I'm going to start at negative 2, down 1 over 1, or up 1 over 1. And there are our answers. We got two. Oh, and look at that. They just happen to match perfectly. So good. So good. All right, I want you to try this one. Take a second, pause the video, and try it on your own. Okay, so on this one, I plugged in here. I had x minus y minus. This is very important. Now, I put this in parentheses. This whole big thing goes in here. The reason I put in parentheses, I'm distributing a negative. So that was positive x squared plus x minus 19. I combined like terms. I got two x's, subtracted 80. I got negative 99. Two numbers that multiply to negative 99 and add a 2 are 11 and negative 99. So when I use the zero product property, I got negative 11 and positive 9. I chose the second equation. It seemed a little bit less involved. I plugged in negative 11. I got negative 91. I plugged in 9, and I got negative 71. So if you want to pause and look at that, feel free to do so, okay? Now, we are going to solve these. We're going to solve, in fact, any system of equation with a graphing calculator. So make sure you have a graphing calculator right now. I'll pause for just a second. Okay, so let's do this one. We're going to sketch it so we know what it looks like, and then we're going to solve it. So the first thing I need to do is go to y equals. Now, I have a lot of, I'm going to use a lot of different things over here. I'm going to do, this is an absolute value equation. So when you need to find these things, sometimes they're in blue, like the square root function is here. But a lot of times this math button right here is a big tip. So I'm in math. I don't see anything, but I, I'm going to go next door to numbers, and they're ABS. That is absolute value. So x minus 4. And on the outside, I put plus 2.5. I'm going to go down. Now, this one, I need the second function of that. Second square root function of x plus 5. Now, when you're in something you need to get out, you have to arrow out of it. Plus 3.1. And press equals. Biggest problem I see with kids and calculators, they put stuff in wrong. All right, so let's graph it. All right, so right now we know what it looks like. Let's sketch this graph. You could totally sketch this graph 
I'm just going to cheat and copy and paste it here. All right. All right, so we have our sketch here. Now you could do this by hand, obviously. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now we want to find our intersections. We have two. We have one right here, and we have one right here. So to find these, we have to go into the graph calc menu. That's second, and trace above trace is calc. You've used this menu before um, earlier in the year. We're going to go down to number five, intersect. So now there's two, and it's going to be done the exact same way. So you need to make sure that your calculator knows where you're talking about. So I'm going to get this cursor to as close as I can to one of my two intersections. And then it asks you some questions. Is this the first curve? Yes, that's our first equation. Press enter. Is this my second curve? Yes, that's my second equation. Press enter. Do I want to guess? Not really. Press enter. There we have it, our first one. 0 0.096, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, and 5.54. So let's write that down, shall we? So what did we say? It was 0 0.96 comma 5.54. All right, now we need to find the second one. So it's the same process. I go to second, calc. I have to do the intersection, so I go down to five again. Now I need to move it to the other side here where the, the other intersection point is. Just need to get as close as I think it can get. First curve, yes. Second curve, yes. And here we have our intersection. It looks to be 8.24 and 6.74. So let's write that down. We have 8.24 and 6.74. Now in this equation, it only intersected twice, so that's fine. We're done. We found them both. All right, so here's what I want you to try. Try this on your own, right here. You try this one, all right? This cube root function is in the math folder or the math tab where I showed you before, all right? So try that one and we'll see how we do. Okay, so I got this equation right here and it's pretty clear there's two solutions, one right here and the other one right here, right? When I did it, I got it was 0 0.05 comma negative 0 0.73 and 5.83 comma negative 0 0.01. Be careful, a lot of problems on rounding to nearest hundredths. Remember, that's something we learned in elementary school. So there you have it. This is a great way to check all your work. Even the earlier equations, you could put it in there. It may be a little bit harder. You had to solve for y, but you could put them in there and, and solve them that way too. But we're going to ask you to show your work, okay? So now that I've shown you a trick, doesn't make it just you get out of that. Good luck on the master check. All right, let us know if you need help and what we can do to help you get better. Don't hesitate to ask for help. We are here to help you. Be the change you want to see in the world. Boom! I'm out of here.